Hi, I'm Brian Collin, and today's episode is on Pavlov's theory of classical conditioning. If you're having trouble studying and tired of Quizlet, check out Learn My Test for free at www.learnmytest.com. The best way to study is taking practice tests, and Learn My Test helps you build college-level practice tests without writing a single question. So before we get started, I'm just going to review what a stimulus is. So stimulus is anything in your environment that's presented to a person or an animal, and the response is the animal or human's response or reaction to that stimulus. To understand Pavlov's theory, you need to know the following terms. The first is the unconditioned stimulus, U.S., conditioned response, U.R., neutral stimulus, N.S., conditioned stimulus, C.S., and conditioned response, C.R. The video will go over all of these so you know them well. The first thing that Pavlov did was he presented a piece of meat to dogs. And, of course, like most hungry dogs... They would salivate to the piece of meat or drool when they saw the piece of meat. The unconditioned stimulus in the previous case is the meat because the meat produces a natural reaction from the dog by the dog salivating. So anything that you, when something in your environment produces a reaction that's not a learned reaction, That's called an unconditioned stimulus. Remember that an unconditioned stimuli is something that you don't have to learn. So you don't have to learn to feel pain after you get pricked with a pin. You don't have to learn to get sick after being exposed to bacteria or a virus. Food bacteria viruses getting pricked are all examples of unconditioned stimuli. Your reaction to an unconditioned stimulus is called the unconditioned response, or UR. For example, the UR for getting exposed to bacteria is getting sick, or the UR for getting pricked with a pin is feeling pain. Pavlov rang a bell in front of the dogs in his study. The dogs did not have a response to the ringing bell. The bell at this point is a neutral stimulus, or NS. A neutral stimulus, or NS, does not produce a response. If I see a tree outside and don't pay much attention to it, this would be a neutral stimulus, or NS. If I see a chair at a cafe and don't react much to it, that would also classify as a neutral stimulus. Pavlov presented the meat to the dog and rang the bell at the same time so the dog would associate the sound of the bell with the meat and eventually salivate to the sound of the bell. Acquisition is the part when the unconditioned stimulus and the conditioned stimulus are presented together to produce the conditioned response. Acquisition is basically when the conditioned response is learned. Eventually, Pavlov took the meat away and just rang the bell by itself. The dog would salivate to only the sound of the bell. At this point, the bell is no longer the neutral stimulus because it produces a reaction from the dog. It is the conditioned stimulus, or CS. At this point, Pavlov has taught his dogs to salivate to the sound of a bell. The dog's salvation response to the bell, or the, un- or the conditioned stimulus, is the conditioned response, or CR. So any response to a conditioned stimulus is a conditioned response, or CR. It makes sense that if you ring the bell and don't show the dog the meat, that the dog is going to stop associating the bell with the meat. And that's what extinction is. So extinction is when the conditioned response stops because the conditioned stimulus hasn't been presented with the unconditioned stimulus for a while. Let's say that you ring the bell enough times without the meat that the dog forgets to salivate to the bell 30 times in a row. But let's say the 31st time the dog salivates to the bell. This is what's called spontaneous recovery. Spontaneous recovery is when the condition stimulus produces the condition response after the condition response has stopped.
So let's break classical conditioning down using an example. Let's say you were presented, you ate a cheeseburger with bacteria in it, and the bacteria in the cheeseburger made you sick. And then you were no longer wanted to eat cheeseburgers again because you associated the bacteria in the cheeseburger with all cheeseburgers. So in this example, the bacteria in the cheeseburger is what's causing you to get sick. And the unconditioned response is you getting sick to the bacteria in the cheeseburger. So the unconditioned stimulus is the bacteria. The unconditioned response is you getting sick from the bacteria. Now, not all cheeseburgers you eat make you sick. But since you associated the cheeseburger or the conditioned stimulus with the bacteria, the unconditioned stimulus, and getting sick, the unconditioned response, now the cheeseburger, the conditioned stimulus, produces a sick feeling or conditioned response. Hi, my name is Brian Collin. I'm a psychology instructor and I have a PhD in educational psychology. I created Learn My Test to help students maximize their study time and ace their exams. So if you're tired of Quizlet, check out Learn My Test at www.learnmytest.com. It's 100% free. If you're taking psychology and you want me to send you some of my practice tests or practice tests that my students have made to help you study for your exams, add me as a study buddy on Learn My Test. My email address is briancolininstructor at gmail.com. That's briancolininstructor at gmail.com.